The bombing of Darwin, also known as the Battle of Darwin, on 19 February 1942 was the largest single attack ever mounted by a foreign power on Australia. On that day, 242 Japanese aircraft, in two separate raids, attacked the town, ships in Darwin's harbour and the town's two airfields in an attempt to prevent the Allies from using them as bases to contest the invasion of Timor, and Java during World War II. Darwin was lightly defended relative to the size of the attack, and the Japanese inflicted heavy losses upon Allied forces at little cost to themselves. The urban areas of Darwin also suffered some damage from the raids and there were a number of civilian casualties. More than half of Darwin's civilian population left the area permanently, before or immediately after the attack. The two Japanese air raids were the first, and largest, of more than 100 air raids against Australia during 1942-43. Chapter 1, Background In 1942, Darwin, whilst it was the capital of the Northern Territory, was a small town with limited civil and military infrastructure. Due to its strategic position in Northern Australia, the Royal Australian Navy and Royal Australian Air Force had constructed bases near the town in the 1930s and the early years of World War II. Darwin's pre-war population was 5,800. As early as August 1941, Darwin had been a key in the South Pacific Air Ferry Route designed to avoid routes through the Japanese mandate in the Central Pacific for bomber reinforcement of the Philippines. The first fight to use the route occurred when 9B-17D bombers of the 14th Bombardment Squadron left Hawaii on 5 September and passed through Darwin 10-12 September. By October 1941 plans were underway to position fuel and supplies with two ships, including use at Don Esteban, being chartered and actively engaged in that purpose when war came. By November 1941 Australia had agreed to allow the establishment of training bases, maintenance facilities, munitions storage, communications, and improvement of airfields, including at Darwin, to meet the needs of the B-17 bombers in Australia. Following the outbreak of the Pacific War in early December 1941, Darwin's defences were strengthened. In line with plans developed before the war, several Australian Army and RAF units stationed in the town were sent to the Netherlands East Indies to strengthen the defences of the islands of Ambon and Timor. An improvised plan for support of the Philippines and the Dutch East Indies was completed in Washington on 20 December 1941 by the U.S. Army General Staff. It envisioned Darwin as the hub of transshipment efforts to supply those forces by landing supplies at Brisbane, shipping overland to Darwin, and onward by air and blockade running ships. In reality, transport to Darwin by sea was necessary. Supplies and shipping intended both to build the Darwin base and to support the Java and Philippine forces were gathered in Darwin and the vicinity. In the two months before the air raids, all but 2,000 civilians were evacuated from the town. Japanese submarines I-121 and I-123 laid mines off Darwin in January 1942. By mid-February 1942 Darwin had become an important allied base for the defense of the Ne. The Japanese had captured Ambon, Borneo, and Celebes between December 1941 and early February 1942. Landings on Timor were scheduled for 20 February, and an invasion of Java was planned to take place shortly afterwards. In order to protect these landings from Allied interference, the Japanese military command decided to conduct a major air raid on Darwin. On 10 February a Japanese reconnaissance aircraft overflew the town, and identified an aircraft carrier, five destroyers, and 21 merchant ships in Darwin Harbour, as well as 30 aircraft at the town's two airfields. Among the ships in harbour were those returned the morning before the attack from the convoy escorted by USS Houston involved in the failed effort to reinforce Timor. Houston had departed for Java but left Mauna Loa and the Meigs which had attempted to transport Australian troops to Timor and the U.S. Army transports Port Ma and Tulagi which had embarked a U.S. infantry regiment at Darwin. Chapter 2, Prelude Chapter 2 Section 1, Opposing Forces Despite Darwin's strategic importance to the defense of Australia, the city was poorly defended. 
The Australian Army's anti-aircraft defences comprised 16 QF 3.7-inch A guns and two 3-inch A guns to counter aircraft flying at high altitude and a small number of Lewis guns for use against low-flying raiders. The crews of these guns had conducted little recent training due to ammunition shortages. The air forces stationed in and near the town comprised No. 12 Squadron, which was equipped with CAC Wirraway advanced trainers, and No. 13 Squadron which operated Lockheed Hudson light bombers. Six Hudsons, three from No. 2 Squadron and three from No. 13 Squadron, also arrived at Darwin on 19 February after having been evacuated from Timor. None of the six Wirraways at Darwin on the day of the raid were serviceable. At the time of the event, there was no functional radar to provide early warning of air raids, and the town's civil defences were dysfunctional. The Low Commission, which was appointed to investigate the raids shortly after they occurred, was informed that the Australian military estimated that Darwin would have needed 36 heavy anti-aircraft guns and 250 fighter aircraft to defend it against a raid of the scale which occurred on 19 February. In addition to the Australian forces, 10 United States Army Air Forces Curtis P-40 Warhawks were passing through Darwin en route to Java on the day of the attack. The P-40 pilots were largely inexperienced in combat. A total of 65 Allied warships and merchant vessels were in Darwin Harbour at the time of the raids. The warships included the United States Navy destroyer Peary, and seaplane tender William B. Preston. The RAN ships in port were the sloops, Swan and Warrego, corvettes de Lorraine and Katoomba, auxiliary minesweepers Gunbar and Tolga, patrol boat Kungula, depot ship Platypus, examination vessel Southern Cross, Lugger Mavy, and four boom net ships. Several USN and Australian troop ships were in the harbour along with a number of merchant vessels of varying sizes. Most of the ships in the harbour were anchored near each other, making them an easy target for air attack. Moreover, no plans had been prepared for how the ships should respond to an air raid. Dot in addition to the vessels in port, the American Army supply ships Don Isidro and Florence D., former Philippine vessels acquired as part of the Southwest Pacific Area Command's permanent army fleet earlier in February, were near Bathurst Island bound for the Philippines with arms and supplies on the morning of the raid. Darwin was attacked by aircraft flying from aircraft carriers and land bases in the Ney. The main force involved in the raid was the first carrier air fleet which was commanded by Vice Admiral Chuichi Nagumo. This force comprised the aircraft carriers Akagi, Kaga, Hiryu, and Soyu and a powerful force of escorting surface ships. All four carriers had participated in the attack on Pearl Harbor at the start of the Pacific War. In addition to the carrier-based aircraft, 54 land-based bombers also struck Darwin in a high-level bombing raid nearly two hours after the first one struck at 0956. These comprised 27 Gemnel bombers flying from Ambon, and another 27 G4M Betty bombers operating from Kendari in Celebes. Chapter 3, Air Raids Chapter 3 Section 1, First Raid the four Japanese aircraft carriers launched 188 aircraft on the morning of 19 February. The main objective of their crews was attacking ships and port facilities in Darwin Harbour. Their aircraft comprised 81 Nakajima B-5N light bombers, 71 Ichida dive bombers, and an escort of 36 Mitsubishi A-6M fighters. While the B-5N was a purpose-built torpedo bomber, it could instead carry up to 800 kilograms of bombs and there is no evidence of torpedoes being used on this occasion, the DEA could carry up to 514 kilograms of bombs. All of these aircraft were launched by 8.45 am. This wave was led by Commander Mitsuo Fuchida, who had also commanded the first wave of attackers during the raid on Pearl Harbor. On their way to Darwin, Zeros shot down a U.S. Navy PBY Catalina, and strafed a Wasaf C-47 Skytrain on the ground, near Melville Island. At 9.35 a.m. Father McGrath of the Sacred Heart Mission on Bathurst Island, who was also an Australian coastwatcher, 
sent a message using a pedal radio to the amalgamated wireless postal radio station at Darwin that a large number of aircraft were flying overhead and proceeding southward. The message was then relayed to the Royal Australian Air Force operations at 9.37 a.m. No general alarm was given until about 10 a.m. as the RAF officers there wrongly judged that the aircraft which had been sighted were the Tenasaf P-40s, which were returning to Darwin at the time after reports of bad weather forced them to abort a flight to Java via Kupang, West Timor. As a result, the air raid sirens at Darwin were not sounded before the raid. Flying escort in a Zero fighter, Petty Officer Yoshikazu Nagahama, was separated from his squadron while he was attacking the PBY flying boat and arrived over the city alone ahead of the strike force, which was making a turn to attack from the south. He engaged five U.S. Army Air Force P-40 Warhawk fighters and single-handedly shot down four of them. The Japanese raiders began to arrive over Darwin at 9.58 a.m. HMAS Gunbar was the first ship to be attacked, being strafed by several Zero fighters. At about this time, the town's air raid sirens were belatedly sounded. The Japanese bombers then conducted dive bombing and level bombing attacks on the ships in Darwin Harbor. These attacks lasted for 30 minutes, and resulted in the sinking of three warships and six merchant vessels, and damage to another ten ships. The ships sunk were the USS Peary, HMAS Navy, Usad Meigs, MV Neptuna, Zealandia, SS Mauna Loa, MV British Motorist. The oil tanker Caralee, and the coal storage hulk, Kellett sank later. At least, 21 laborers working on the wharf were killed when it was bombed. All but one of the P-40s of Major Floyd Pell's 33rd Pursuit Squadron, was shot down or destroyed on the ground at RAF Darwin by the Japanese. Japanese aircraft bombed and strafed the base and civil airfield, as well as the town's army barracks and oil store. All of these facilities were seriously damaged. The bombers began to leave the Darwin area at about 10.10. On their way back to the carriers, their crews noted two Philippine registered freighters lying just outside the port Florence D. and Don Isidro. This information contributed to planning for the second raid that afternoon. Japanese losses may have been as few as five aircraft and three crew. However, Another 34 Japanese aircraft landed safely with battle damage. Warrant Officer Katsuyoshi Suru, and First Petty Officer Takeitsu Uchikado were killed when their Aichi dive bomber crashed near RAF Darwin. Petty Officer Hajime to Yoshima was taken prisoner after crash landing his damaged Zero on Melville Island. Those who ditched near the Japanese fleet and were rescued included Flyer First Class Yoshio Igawa, and the Aichi crew of Flyer First Class Takeshi Yamada, and Flyer First Class Kinji Funazaki. In 2013, a reference was discovered in Japanese records to a Nakajima torpedo bomber suffering wheel damage from a gunshot and both crew being rescued after ditching. Allied ground fire was relatively intense and may have claimed all but two of the Japanese aircraft lost. Only one of the Asaf P-40 pilots remained airborne throughout the first attack, First Lieutenant Robert O. Stryker, who has also been credited by U.S. and Japanese sources with one Aichi shot down and one damaged. Toyoshima's Zero is considered to have been brought down by small arms fire from sappers Tom Lamb and Leno Shea of the 19th Battalion. Most aviation historians believe Suru and Uchikado's Aichi was brought down by ground fire, possibly from a major Australian army camp at Winelli. Igawa reported that the damage to his zero came from hitting a tree at Darwin. Chapter 3 Section 2 Second Raid The second wave, made up of 54 land-based medium bombers arrived over Darwin just before midday. The town's air raid sirens were sounded at 11.58 am, when the bombers were sighted. The Japanese force separated into two groups flying at 18,000 feet. One of these formations attacked RAF base Darwin from the southwest while the other approached from the northeast. The two formations arrived over the base at the same time, and dropped their bombs simultaneously. The Japanese bombers then turned, and made a second attack on the base. Due to defective fuses, 
the Australian heavy anti-aircraft flak gunners were unable to shoot down or damage any of the high-flying Japanese aircraft. The bombers left the Darwin area at about 12.20 pm. This raid inflicted extensive damage on the RAF base, though casualties were light. Of the RAF aircraft at the base, six Hudson-like bombers were destroyed and another Hudson, and a Wirraway were badly damaged. Two American P-40s and a B-24 Liberator bomber were also destroyed. Six RAF personnel were killed. Lewis and Ingman list 30 aircraft destroyed. The Japanese carrier force launched a small number of DA dive bombers during the afternoon of 19 February to attack the Florence D and Don Isidro. Don Isidro was the first of these two ships to be attacked, and was rapidly sunk 40 kilometers north of Melville Island. Eleven of her 84-strong crew were killed. The dive bombers also attacked Florence D and sank her off Bathurst Island with the loss of four crewmen. All of the survivors from Don Isidro were rescued by the corvette HMAS Warnambool on 20 February. Some of Florence D's survivors landed on Bathurst and Melville Islands while the remainder were rescued by Warnambool on 23 February. Among the survivors of Florence D were the rescued crew of a U.S. Navy PBY piloted by then-Lieutenant Thomas H. Mora. Admiral Halstead, strafed and with plates damaged by near misses, was brought to the pier where U.S. Army volunteers along with survivors of the U.S. and Philippine vessels helped unload her 14,000 drums of aviation gasoline. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, Consequences Of major military consequence was the loss of most of the cargo shipping available to support efforts in Java and the Philippines with Java being effectively sealed off from further surface shipments from Australia. The air raids caused chaos in Darwin, with most essential services including water and electricity being badly damaged or destroyed. Fears of an imminent invasion spread and there was a wave of refugees, as some of the town's civilian population fled inland. There were reports of looting, with provost marshals being among the accused. According to official figures, 278 personnel belonging to RAF Northwestern Area Command were considered to have deserted as a result of the raids, although it has been argued that the desertions were mostly the result of ambiguous orders given to RAF ground staff after the attacks. In the words of journalist Douglas Lockwood, after the second Japanese air raid, the commander of RAF Darwin, Wing Commander Stuart Griffith, summoned his senior administrative officer, squadron leader Swan, and gave a verbal order that all airmen were to move half a mile down the main road and then half a mile inland. At this vague rendezvous point, arrangements would be made to feed them. The order led to utter chaos. In being passed by word of mouth from one section to another, sometimes with officers present and sometimes not, it became garbled to the extent it was unrecognizable against the original. In its ultimate form it was interpreted, especially by those desiring such an interpretation, of an impending order for immediate and general evacuation of the area. Highly exaggerated rumors of an impending Japanese invasion had already reached the base from the town and spread quickly among those wanting to believe them. In the absence of restraint, men gathered their belongings and abandoned their stations. While the NWA staff could see what was happening and issued countermanding orders the damage was done and hundreds of men were already beyond recall. The Australian Army also faced difficulty controlling some of its own troops from looting private property, including furniture, refrigerators, stoves, pianos, clothes even children's toys due to the breakdown of law and order after the bombing and the ensuing chaos. Many civilian refugees never returned, or did not return for many years, and in the post-war years some land they owned in Darwin had been expropriated by government bodies in their absence made legal by the Darwin Lands Acquisition Act 1945. The bombing of Darwin resulted in the destruction of seven of the eleven above-ground storage tanks, located on Stokes Hill, in raids on 19 February 16 March and 16 June 1942. This led to the construction of underground oil storage tunnels in Darwin in 1943. Chapter 5, Casualties and Damage 
The number of people killed during the 19th of February, raids is disputed. The Low Commission, which investigated them in March 1942, estimated 243 victims but, assuming a few were unidentified, concluded I am satisfied that the number is approximately 250 and I doubt whether any further investigation will result in ascertaining a more precise figure. Some researchers and government officials, including John Bradford, Dr. Peter Stanley, Tom Womack, Paul Rosenzweig, and Rear Admiral Kevin Scarce have said there were 250 to 262 fatalities. However, a plaque unveiled in Darwin in 2001 gave the total as 292. The plaque indicated 10 sailors had been killed aboard the USS William B. Preston but the US Navy said there were 13 fatalities and Peter Groose, author of An Awkward Truth, said 15, he wrote, with the William B. Preston total corrected to 15, a figure of 297 known dead is the best count anyone is likely to achieve, the full death toll is likely to be a little over 300, perhaps as many as 310 or 320. Lewis and Ingman have revised that to 14 in their 2013 book Carrier Attack. In 2000, Darwin historian Peter Forrest, who spoke to survivors and researched the attacks for an unpublished book, said, the first Japanese air raids on Darwin probably killed more than double the official figure of 243, but by 2002 had lowered his estimate to anything up to double that 243. Other estimates put the toll far higher, one soldier who was there claimed to have seen barges filled with bodies towed out to sea, a member of one of the burial teams recounted seeing uncounted bodies shoved in a large hole dug by a bulldozer, according to some sources, former Darwin Mayor Jack Burton estimated 900 people were killed, Harry McCready, who helped rescue survivors and recover bodies in the harbour said, we definitely estimate over 1,000, Rex Ruwalt, one of the soldiers attacked that day. Says that a few days after the raid he was told over the field telephone that army intelligence estimated 1,100 were killed. According to an AP article about the 50th anniversary of the attacks some estimates say as many as 1,000 died. Bradford and Forrest said they spoke to survivors who estimated as many as 1,500 people died. Stanley, Bruce, Rosenzweig, and Tom Lewis rejected such numbers. The former said it was certainly not the 1,024 claimed recently in unsubstantiated reports and groups wrote numbers such as 1,100 are fancifully high. By contrast, there is less dispute over the number of injured during the attacks. The Low Commission estimated between 300 and 400 people were wounded. Lewis said the number was over 400, about 200 of which were seriously injured. Womack wrote that 311 were wounded. Australian military historian Chris Colthart Clark put the total between 250 and 320. Groose wrote, if 900 or 1,100 died, why were the numbers of injured so low? The count of the injured is more accurate, because they were treated in hospital or shipped out aboard the Menunda. The hospitals and Menunda noted names and numbers of those they treated. Chapter 5 Section 1, Myths and Inaccuracies The Japanese raid was unlike the attack on Pearl Harbor in that it was launched against a nation that had already declared war on Japan. It was similar in that it was a successful aerial surprise attack on a naval target that came as a great shock to the attacked nation. While the number of bombs dropped on Darwin by 205 bombers, exceeded those dropped on Pearl Harbor, weighing 133,560 kg by 273, loss of life was much greater at Pearl Harbor than Darwin due to the presence of capital ships and the catastrophic loss of a single battleship, the USS Arizona, and its 1,177 men. A frequently repeated myth is that the Australian government downplayed the damage from the bombing raids on Darwin in a cover-up. The newspapers of the day disprove this claim. On the day of the attack the Prime Minister is quoted on the front pages of most newspapers. Damage to property was considerable, he said, but reports so far to hand do not give precise particulars about the loss of life. The government regards the attacks as most grave, 
and makes it quite clear that a severe blow has been struck on Australian soil. Chapter 6 Further Japanese Raids After the 19th of February 1942 Japanese raid, the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia's north were bombed approximately 100 times between the 4th of March 1942 and the 12th of November 1943. One of the heaviest attacks took place on the 16th of June 1942 when a Japanese force set fire to the oil fuel tanks around the harbour and inflicted severe damage to the vacant banks, stores and railway yards. The Allied navies largely abandoned the naval base at Darwin after the initial 19 February attack, dispersing most of their forces to Brisbane, Fremantle, and other, smaller, seaports. Conversely, Allied air commanders launched a build-up in the Darwin area, building more airfields and deploying many squadrons. The four IJN aircraft carriers that participated in the bombing of Darwin were later sunk during the Battle of Midway in June 1942. Chapter 7, Commemoration and Depictions in Popular Culture A memorial ceremony has been held every year since at least 2009. On 19 February at the Cenotaph in Darwin, at 9.58 a.m., a World War II air raid siren sounds to mark the precise time of the first attack. A fictionalized version of the raid features prominently in the 2008 film Australia. Chapter 7 Section 1, Sources Hata, Ikuhiko, Aizawa, Yasuho, Shores, Christopher Japanese Naval Air Force Fighter Units and Their Aces, 1932-1945 London, UK, Grub Street ISBN 9781906502843 Tagaya, Osamo. Aichi 99 Kanbaku Val Units. Combat Aircraft No. 63. Osprey Publishing. ISBN 978-1841769127.